live we are see you guys like my new shades that i got i told you guys that my eye i had a little scratch on my cornea and that my eyes have been like you know going blurry and stuff yeah i would never wear that every day mm. not so much anyways so i want to say hi to everybody I told you guys I was going to do my soapbox. I haven't done my soapbox in a couple days. What up, Christina? I actually want to say hi to people tonight because I don't get to say hi to everybody. I'm so used to like talking and talking. What up, Anthony? Um, so anyways, Europa was a great turnout. I'm sure that you guys have talked about it or whatever. Before I get, what up, Loretta? I actually, before I get into like this whole little, you know, soapbox thing that I do, you know, I do want to mention something because we do have some people out there that say some things about some things, right? And mine, my, oh my goodness, guys, I do. I look like holy hell. And the reason I look like holy hell right now is this is the first day that I actually feel like semi-decent because I had a whole week, okay? Not just Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Europa in Orlando with like a very minimal amount of time to sleep. Thanks, Justin. I know my eyes look so pretty. They're intact. That's all that matters, right? Anyways, but before that, I had like some very seriously like stressful days. So it did lead up to some some things that I had some health issues with or whatever. So I'll get into that in a second. But regardless, if I look like holy hell, this is, this is just how I look. I have zero makeup on. I don't give a shit. This is how I look. So just you know, take it. So anyways, before I get into this whole thing, because I know that there's some people that out there that like, what up, Kenneth? I do show you love. I'm telling you love right now. I just said hi. Anyways, so before I get into this whole soapbox deal or this whatever deal, like, you know, where I talk to you guys and stuff and tell you guys what the deal is. What up, Art? Thanks. I love you too. So I want to make sure that we make like a simple statement here. Okay. So First of all, I'm busy as hell, so I have very minimal time to bullshit around or to do things that I could give a shit about, okay? And I'm very straightforward. Now, if you don't like, and I'm going to use this particular scenario because it's really, really good. What up, Ralph? Hi, Jeff. Um, so I'm going to use this particular show because everybody likes this show, and that's why it's going to mean like so much to all of you, is that... So if I didn't like Game of Thrones, right, would I sit down and watch Game of Thrones? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch it. Do you think I would sit down and watch Game of Thrones to be like, and okay, mind you, for all of you Game of Thrones lovers out there, because I've never seen it, so mind me for making the statement I'm going to make. But would I sit there and watch Game of Thrones and be like, oh, I'm going to watch Game of Thrones just to be like, oh, my God, you killed that person really bad. You sucked at putting that sword in the wrong spot. Probably not. Okay. Too busy for that. Sorry. So with that being said, that is my favorite line. All of you at the office know that. Um, with that being said, if you don't like something, don't watch it. But. If you do like it, then you're going to watch it. And if you don't like it, then you might watch it anyway. So that's my subliminal message for the night. We'll leave it at that. So those of you out there that love me to death, awesome. Kisses. And those of you out there that hate on my shit, I love you too. Thanks for the views. Anyways, moving on to the next. So anyways, what happened with my eye? So here's the deal. At the end of the day, it's it, it's like simple facts that it's called, I guess, like ocular migraines. And honestly, guys, at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's caused by stress. That's not going away. It's caused by deprivation of sleep. That's not going away. And it's also caused by skipping meals. That's not going away. So it looks like I'm going to have to deal with this. And it does. It causes like some blurred vision and stuff like that. It doesn't feel good. I get these cluster migraines and it kind of looks like I'm looking through like a kaleidoscope kind of thing. And it's it's kind of shitty. But I mean, listen, I'm a soldier. You ride it out. Do what you got to do. Whatever. What I will tell you, though, is a scratch on your cornea does not feel good. Okay. 
go, I go to the ophthalmologist yesterday because I finally was like, all right, let me bite the bullet. I have to go because my eye is literally feeling like it's going to fall out of the socket of like literally it's feeling it's fall out of my head. So I went over there. John was ever so kind enough to take me and I got my eyes dilated and I couldn't see anything for like, <laughs> this is horrible by the way, just so you know, you guys, those of you that do know me, what up Jonathan? Um, and hi Tiffany. So those of you that do know me, you guys know that like if I can't see text messages and emails and like read things for a X period of time, I might have a slight baby heart attack because I have to feel as though I can see things. So for me not to be able to see things for a couple hours, it was like very intense for me. And I had to have John say hi to John, by the way. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Everybody always blames me for throwing John on at whatever, 10 o'clock at night. But, you know, he's hanging out. He's fine. He'll live. So, anyways. Hi, Amy. Hi, Jerome. What up, Shanna? So, anyways. I went in. They did my little eye check. Everything seems to be fine. I have a scratch on the cornea. She's like, hey, it looks like somebody dragged something across your cornea. I'm like, yeah, I have no idea what took place. All I know is it hurts like a son of a gun and I need something to fix it. Okay, so give me some drops. I'm good to go there. So going on with the moving on, I got some, you know, some, a cold going on. I got some antibiotics for that. You know, listen, when you run your body down, that's what happens. You just, you don't take care of yourself and you, you know, run your body down. You got to get some sleep. I am still extremely exhausted. I, I would be lying to you if I told you that I'm like totally fine and everything is like perfect. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am exhausted. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to like recuperate because the next day, it's not like I wake up tomorrow and everything, like I can have like a three hour break where I'm just like, okay, everything's cool. I actually went into the office. If you guys didn't see John's live this morning, we actually went into the office at like 7.45, 8 o'clock in the morning. We don't usually get into the office until usually, I don't know, between 11 and 1. Because we're working at the house and I'm trying to set everything up for the day. And when you do that, you can't do that and do it in the shower. It just doesn't work out that way. So anyways, we did go to the office early and it's been a very, very, very long weekend and a very, very, very long day. So... I do want to say a big thanks to everybody that came out to Europa and that came out and supported us and came out and said, what's up to us? I'm really excited I was able to meet you guys face to face. That was super, 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 super cool. Um, I do want to share a very, very cool story with you guys. <laughs> this is why I do my lives next to John. So, you know, he like bumps me whenever I do like my lives and he says to me, like, don't say that. Um, but anyways, so we go to the movies the other night. I am going to tell you guys the story, right? I specifically park. Okay. And for those of you that say that I bitch and complain, I'm telling you what the deal is. And the reason why I tell you the deal is because I'm real. I'm going to tell you how, like how I feel about things because most people do not come forward and tell you guys what the deal is and what goes on. They just don't. So I will. And I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to say it. So anyways, Long story short, I got my car, right? I park it far away and never, never, never land at the movie theaters, okay? I park far, far away. What did you just say? John parked it far away. It's the same thing, okay? We park in the same area of the movie theaters. There's like a bazillion rows you can park in in the, in like in the front and we don't park there and we specifically walk and do I look like I wanna walk? No, I don't wanna walk. So I do walk for the specific fact that I can put my car far away and nobody's gonna park next to it because it's like 500 spots open, right? Right? Okay, so we come back out of the movie theaters. <laughs> The way this worked out was kind of funny. And you guys also know that, you know, I have zero filter. So this mouth of mine is very complicated to keep under control sometimes. So anyways, what's up? What's up, Anna? All right. So I park it. John parks it. Whatever. Whoever. We park it far away. We walk. Come out of the movie theater because, you know, we take Peter to go see Hellboy, which actually was a decent movie. So we come out. There's nobody parked in the whole damn parking spots. Like, nobody anywhere, all right? 
What kind of car you really want to know? Mercedes S550. And let me tell you guys something about this Mercedes, okay? This is why it means so much to me. I'm going to explain it to you so you understand. So my very first car was a Cavalier, okay? I bought it off my parents because my parents let me buy their car. After that, it was a Neon because I worked at Suncoast Ford and I did their switchboard and I was their, I worked in their accounting department at 17 years old. Then the next car I think was a Malibu and after that was a 300. So now I have this like really nice car and I want to take such good care of it because I've never had such a nice car and I'm like, you know, I've worked hard. I've got this nice car. I don't want anybody to mess up my car because I have a nice car. You guys get it? All right. So that's where I'm at. That's why I park it in Never Neverland and I walk. Okay? So when I come out of the movie theaters and I have some asshole that decides to park his truck, literally, here's my car. Here's his car. And it's literally like this close to the vehicle. When you look at the vehicle, you're like, how did you get out of that vehicle? Like, I just want to know. So, of course, like, we go over there and John's like, how the hell did this guy park so freaking close? I know. I hate it. It's another rant, but it is what it is. Brant, right? You know, I love you too, Brant. So, listen, it's true, though. I'm not lying. So, this car, this truck or whatever parks literally, like, two feet away from the door where you can't even open the damn door. So... Of course, we get in the vehicle. I'm like super pissed off at this point because I'm like, why do you have to park next to my vehicle when there's like 50 parking spots? Literally, there's 50 parking spots. Why do you have to park in this particular one next to this particular vehicle? Like, it's almost like you did it on purpose. It's so irritating. So <laughs> we go ahead and we get in the, we get in the car. And I, of course, I did my little scan with my flashlight just to make sure there wasn't anything in the car. What do you know? This guy happened to have seen Hellboy 2. He must have happened to have went to the same movie. Because we get in the vehicle. Of course, John turns on the car. And I hear, you know, beep, beep. So, of course, I look to the right. And, of course, it's the, you know, lights of the truck that's parked next to us. I couldn't even help myself but to roll down the window. And I asked this guy, I'm like, I would like to know. I, I really want to know, and this is the nicer version of how it came out. I really would like to know, like, how you plan on getting in your vehicle. Because you park so close that I would love to know how the hell you're going to get inside of your truck without messing up my car. So anyways, that was the story of the night for the week. That was my baby rant. So on my lovely soapboxes, because I've had... I'm not even going to say people because I would be lying if I said people. I've had a certain individual that has made it a point to say that, you know, we're all about our patience and all this other stuff. Guys, to be totally honest with you, I don't need to sit here and say that Titan Medical Center and me and John and all the awesome people that work in my office. What up, Ron? Michelle, Megan, Ashley, Nicole, Emily, Chenille. Dr. Perez, are, I don't have to sit here and justify that we're here for our patients. Do you know why I don't need to say that? Is because actions speak louder than words. So I don't need to sit here and preach that we're here for our patients because our patients know that we're here for them. This soapbox isn't meant for me to sell anything. It's simply for you guys to see a day in the life of like a real person. I am real. Now, I may not be your average individual, but I am a real person. I am a little over the top sometimes, and I'm okay with that. But I'm also a real person. So, some people can respect that. Most people actually can respect that. So, I just wanted to make sure that I made that very clear. That I don't need to make a, you know, like this is I feel so strongly about our patients, and I do this and that for our patients, because... I don't need to say it because we just do it. It's that much easier for us to just do it than say it. You know? John shaking his head like, yeah, I agree with you. Pretty much. <laughs> so, anyways, I am looking forward to this weekend. It's Easter weekend. 
Um, we, oh, I'm Greek by association or however you want to call that. And there is a Greek Easter. We celebrate both. And we've got both Greek and English Easter, you know, to celebrate with Peter. I definitely think it's time to break to Peter. And I think he's still downstairs, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. I really think he, I should tell him, like, that basket is from me. Like, me and Dad. Okay? You're nine years old. Like, you should know the basket is not from a bunny that jumped down the street and put a basket together for you. Like, no. Mom and dad went to Target or Walmart and we put together a cute little basket for you with all this cute little candy and you should love us for that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm horrible. I know. Hey, that's the real deal. Hi, Joe. What's up? Joe's on here. Oh. I was just talking about Easter and how I should tell Peter that the Easter Bunny doesn't really exist. But then he's going to start, you know, questioning Santa Claus and all this other stuff. He's going to eventually find out. I know. I think I found out when Santa Claus wasn't real. Probably around. How old are you? I found out when I was probably like eight. I don't know how old you guys were, but I was about eight. I mean, kind of start to get to like, you know, oh, I don't know. Santa Claus isn't real. You know, these presents are pretty, you know, precise to what I asked my mom and dad. But I mean, the Easter Bunny, though, I mean, come on. He's going to be, I mean, he's almost 10. Right? I mean... It's okay, right? If you guys don't think it's okay for me to tell him that the Easter Bunny doesn't exist because the Easter Bunny's like, eh, it's a bunny in a suit that brought you an Easter basket when really mom and dad, I mean, come on. I work an 18 hour work day. I should definitely tell this child that I put his Easter basket together and made it all cute and put a little fun dip and everything in there just for him because I love him so much. I think it would mean so much more than just a bunny bringing a basket to the, to the house. Don't you think? John agrees. So anyways, guys, stay tuned. I just want to jump in, say hi to everybody, show you guys my awesome shades that I had to wear all day yesterday. That was not fun at all. Now I understand why people do not want to get their eyes dilated. Because when I went there, they were like, hey, listen, if we don't need to dilate your eyes, we won't. I'm like, you know what? Go ahead and do it because I don't have time to come back here to get dilated. I'm too busy for appointments and whatever else you guys want to do with me. So you better just figure it out now. Find out what the problem is. Fix it. And that's it. So if I got to suffer for a day, then I guess it is what it is, right? So what up, Art? We grew up in a hardcore. Yeah, my mom told me a Santa Claus Easter Bunny show. <laughs> my parents didn't tell me. I just so happened to catch them bringing in presents from outside at midnight and putting them under the tree. Um, and just, that's what it was, you know, it was, it was fantastic. Manny, you're so far away and you're, you're tuning in. I'm so excited to see your face. I have a special shirt for you that's waiting at the office just for you. And it's one of the limited edition, no alternative shirts. Tight and strong. Tight and strong. Tight and loyal t-shirts waiting with your name on it. Cause you're my homie. And Michael... Paul, who just joined in, I do want to say hi to you as well. You're going to be one of our new Titan family members. So welcome. Welcome to the Titan family. Chrissy, you're my homie. I love you. I know you're just tuning in. I'm about to tune out because I'm tired. But I do want to say thank you for all your hard work at the office. You've been absolutely amazing. And I couldn't ask for a better employee friend. Your soon-to-be Titan sister titan internal team family like you are the bomb we love you and there's not many people that kind of get inducted like that so we love you to death and uh i will talk to you guys soon i'm gonna tune out because i gotta get some sleep and i got a very very long weekend ahead of me again i don't know how this just just rolls into the next but um you know as the soldiers do they ride it out so everybody pray for my baby cornea I'm sure that it will survive with these wonderful drops. And don't judge me for my awesome non makeupness Okay? And, um, John, you say hi. You say bye. Bye. <laughs> He's so tired right now. So, anyways, guys, I hope everybody has a wonderful night. Art, I love you. You're the bomb. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Sending my love. If you like my soapboxes, awesome. If you don't, thanks for watching anyway.